everyone welcome to my channel and welcome to a reading vlog so it's may it's aapi heritage month and i haven't finished a book yet so i definitely want to try to fix that and um i've started a couple books that i feel pretty good about so first we've got disorientation by elaine say chow this is an arc I was sent from the publisher, but it is out now. And it's a literary fiction book about a PhD student um, who's finishing up her dissertation about this Chinese American poet. And it's a dissertation that she doesn't really want to be doing and she just kind of found herself having to do it. And it focuses a lot about her life in academia and the whiteness that she Faces. And I've also got Set On You by Amy Lee, which was sent to me from Berkeley. And this is a new uh, romance book from a debut author who is Chinese Canadian. And the main character of this book is biracial Chinese and Irish. And um, it's about two gym nemeses who fall in love. And I usually would really not be into a gym story at all, but. Um, but I thought I would give this one a shot and so far I am enjoying it and I found that it was pretty easy to get into. I've been listening to the audiobook for this one and I've been liking the narrator and so I think I'll have an easy time finishing up this one. So those are the books I'll be reading. I also have some older footage from Indie Bookstore Day and a library event that I went to that I'm gonna throw in and anything else interesting that I get up to. So yeah. That's what will be happening in this vlog. show you what I got. So they had this freebie which is a short story by Mieko Kawakami and I haven't read anything by her but she's someone I've been interested in and, and this is an indie bookstore day exclusive so I'm glad that I went and got this for free. Um, and then I treated myself to Ocean Vuong's new poetry collection, Time is a Mother, and it's signed to Here's his signature. I'm not a huge poetry person, but I did like Ocean Vuong's um, first collection, Night Sky with Exit Wounds. So I'm interested in reading this one. And I love On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. So this was my little Saturday treat. For a reading check-in so I read up to 100 pages of disorientation which is about 25% of the way through and I did decide to go back and start annotating um, to keep track of some of the themes because I feel like there have been some interesting moments and um, I wanted to see like how those themes would come back in throughout the book and how it builds on that I feel like at this point, I'm not totally sure what exactly the book is going to be about, like what it'll focus on. So far, I am very interested in the perspective of the main character because she is someone who I feel is relatable to my experiences, but she's also presenting a different view that I'm not familiar with because she is within the fields of literature and East Asian studies. So, it's interesting to see what she's encountering in those departments. And there have been some interesting characters introduced, like her thesis advisor, 
who's a white man and says some questionable things and was a big source of pressure for her to feel like she needed to do her dissertation on this topic. And there's also a sort of rival figure who's another Asian American who's studying the same poet that she's studying. So there's kind of like this animosity between them, but at the same time, she also wants to impress her. And like in the back of her mind, I think she wishes that they were friends. And so it's an interesting dynamic there. And there's also a bit of a mystery element going on right now where she's trying to figure out this puzzle piece for her dissertation and I feel like things are gonna get wackier from there because it is supposed to be a satire and I think that that I thing is going to have repercussions so I'm interested to see where that takes us and for set on you I've been listening to the audiobook and I'm 40% of the way in I feel like the story is a bit simple so far, but not necessarily in a bad way. It's been simple, but fun, um, but just nothing like very unexpected has happened yet. Um, something I forgot to mention, I think, is that the main character is a fitness influencer. So the story focuses a lot on fitness and the gym culture because it largely has taken place in the gym where they met. And then she talks about her job as an influencer and needing to make content about fitness and her body so i think it makes sense for the story and for her character to be a fitness influencer because it also allows um, the author to talk about some issues of body positivity but i'm also sort of wondering whether the story might have been more interesting if she was something other than a influencer just because I feel like personally I'm not super interested in reading about main characters who are influencers and it says this on the synopsis but they run into each other at their grandparents engagement party which is what propelled them to get a little closer and be something more than randos that they see at the gym so I am hoping that maybe we see them in some different settings aside from the gym but it has been enjoyable so far nonetheless. Another update I have is that I went to a concert and I decided that I'm gonna indulge myself and make a little concert montage in here because it makes me happy, so. Kansas, you fucking ready? If you have the words, help me out! Sing it! another reading update. I'm around 70% of the way through both of the books and I have a lot of thoughts about disorientation so I'll just um, really quickly go over my set on you update. So I'm really enjoying seeing the relationship develop between Crystal and Scott. There is cute banter between them and sort of like a friendship dynamic because they are taking it slow and so they're getting to know each other. I do like how I feel some tension between them without it feeling super angsty. There was a certain steamy scene that I read that I think captured the tension between them really well. But right now we're sort of heading into the miscommunication and third act breakup part of the story. And I feel like it kind of is taking away from the momentum that I felt building. Um, I was really enjoying seeing just 
their whole dynamic playing out. So we'll have to see where it goes from here. Okay, so disorientation. Pretty soon after I did my last update, I actually got the twist of the book. I love the twist and I think if I knew this was in the book, I would have been even more interested in picking it up, but I don't wanna spoil it. So I won't go into too much detail about that, but I will say that this book has made me think about a lot. And I think it's the book that has challenged me and made me think the most out of anything I've read in a while. So I've never been in East Asian studies, but I know that white people in East Asian studies is a thing. And whenever I hear about that, my first reaction is usually that it's funny because I, I don't know, I guess it's just funny that a white person is so obsessed with Asian culture. And like, I question why they're so interested in like a haha, do they have yellow fever kind of way. But this book has really made me unravel some of those emotions and kind of interrogate that feeling more. And something from my personal experience that I connected to is that I did take an art history class before and I remember a moment that stuck out to me was learning that one of the leading scholars of Chinese art was a white man. And I guess that felt a little off to me and reflecting more on it now, I see that it is probably a feeling of discomfort and stemming from having to grow up in a white dominant society that suppresses other cultures. And then when you go to learn about other cultures, the experts and the arbiters of truth are just more white people. And another layer to that is thinking about the politics of academia and what it takes to be successful in academia which is something that the main character, Ingrid, is very affected by. At first, I had a hard time getting a read on Ingrid and feeling like I really understood how she felt about things and what were her thoughts to the situations that she was finding herself in. But then I think I realize now that it's more about her being on a journey of figuring out what she feels and that her thoughts are being molded and shaped as the book continues. And the characters in the book sketch out this interesting spectrum where on one end you have people who are just shaped by what society has molded them into being. And on the other side, you have the people who are being radicalized into activists. And Ingrid is somewhere in between. But there's also a divisiveness that exists among these people and among Asian Americans that I think is really interesting and is something I don't think is discussed enough. So I'm really enjoying where this is going and it's given me a lot to think about. Uh, right after I do this clip, I'm actually headed to the library for a library event because they're doing some programming around Interior Chinatown, which is really cool because it's one of my favorite books. And so it's exciting to see it getting some recognition here and that they're featuring an Asian American book. the books 
So set on you, I liked it and I would give it three and a half stars. I think that I would have enjoyed it more if I had more of a strong personal interest in fitness and influencer life because those continue to be a really big focus throughout the book and they are the focus of the things that Crystal is struggling with. But I am surprised with how much I enjoyed this given that I'm not very interested in gym culture at all and I'm only moderately interested in influencer things and so I think this is definitely worth checking out and I enjoyed it. I also liked how the conflict was more of an internal conflict because family is part of the book and Scott and Crystal start getting closer because their grandparents are getting remarried and they're marrying each other. So I was kind of expecting that that might have played a role in them feeling like they couldn't be together, but I'm glad that it didn't really go down that road and it was more about other things. But yeah, I liked this and I love that Crystal is a curvy main character. And disorientation, I'm thinking that I want to give this five stars. The later part of the book really cemented how much I liked it and I really love the character arc that Ingrid goes through and the topics that are addressed in this book. And overall, it felt like a very fresh read because of the things that it talks about and the way that it talks about them. Because for me, it, I felt like it really gave me space to think about these things and navigate through some of my feelings as Ingrid was also going on her own journey. And I also really loved the wider cast of characters so if you are interested in this one, I highly recommend picking it up. Since it is a satire, I think that it helps if you have some background knowledge in Orientalism and Yellow Fever and Yellow Face and stuff like that because that is what um, this is critiquing. So if you are interested in those topics, definitely check out this book. I also think this would be really good for discussions and book club type things. And I kind of wish that I did a spoiler reading vlog so I could have talked about the twist and some of the other things that go on, but maybe I will do a spoiler review one day. So that's going to do it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to buy the books, I'll leave bookshop.org links down below that are affiliate links. So I get a percentage and you also get to help support indie bookstores. And if you're interested in more content from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Amy Lime Reads. And I will see you in the next video.